everyone, Carol from Segovia Quilts here. In today's video tutorial, we're going to be making a super easy quilt top using only two blocks, but you can use however many pieces of fabric you want. So for my quilt top, I'm going to be using yardage. I'm going to be using eight prints from that Blue Escape Coastal Fabric Collection by Lisa Audit for Riley Blake Designs. So let's go ahead and check out this super beachy fabric from Lisa Audit. All right, so these are the eight prints we are going to be using for the quilt top today. So I will go ahead and open these up and give you the SKU numbers for each of them in case you wanna make the same quilt top. So in addition to these eight prints, which will be the main body of the quilt top, I am also adding in um, a little bit of the Painter's Watercolor Swirl, and this is the Corn Flower Color. So now this is going to be the binding for my quilt once we get the top all done. And then one of the two blocks that is going to be making up this quilt is just going to be using some of this Confetti Cotton's Riley White. So now this is going to be part of the quilt top and I'm also going to be using this for my backing fabric. So these are the fabrics that we'll be using. So I did add in one additional fabric that we're going to be using in the body of the quilt. So now this is called Blossom Khaki. This is a coordinating basic that I decided to add because I wanted to get a little bit more of this tan color in the body of the quilt. So this is not part of the Blue Escape Coastal Fabric Collection, but it is a coordinating basic. So for my quilt pattern, I am using yardage. So I have already ironed and pressed all eight of the fabrics that I'm going to be using. So now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is pretty much a two block pattern. But because I'm using yardage, I'm going to be making my blocks via strip sets. So I have folded my first fabric and I folded it in half. So both of my selvage edges are down here and you can see them here. And one thing I will note about this particular collection is if you look down here on the selvage, they actually have these little tiny stars. They look like starfish, and hopefully you can see that down here. But they have these little tiny stars that I want to try and save, so I am going to make sure I cut off a little bit more from the selvage so that I can save these cute little stars and use them in a later project. So again, my fabric has been pressed. It is nice and straight, so I'm going to start off by giving it a straight edge. All right, so the blocks that we're going to be making from our fabric collection are going to be six and a half by six and a half. So based on the yardage that I have for this individual print, I'll be, a, I'll be able to get two strips of six and a half by the width of fabric. And then that'll leave me with a couple of inches. I wanna say it's gonna leave me with about four inches or so left over that I can do something else with. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my first strip. Again, it's going to be six and a half inches. So let's see, this will be six, and then this is my half, so I want my first cut to be right here. All right, so there's my first cut, and then six and a half. My second cut is going to be down here. All right, and that leaves me with about five and three quarter inches left over of the fabric that I'll be able to save and use for a later project. All right, so now that I have my two strips, I'm going to go ahead and cut a strip for my background fabric so I can show you how to put one of these strip sets together 
if you do end up using yardage to make your quilt top. Okay, so I have my next fabric for my second block, and while I'm using white, you can use pretty much whatever color you want, but I thought white would go best with the fabric collection that I'm using, so I'm just gonna start off again by giving this a straight edge so we can do our first strip cut. All right, so we got rid of that. So now, for the strips that this color fabric is going to be, we are going to be doing two and a half inch strips by the width of fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a couple two and a half inch strips because I will need several of them for my quilt top. So I have enough strips of my white fabric cut to do the strip sets for seven of my eight fabrics. So I do need to cut two more strips, but I'm going to go ahead and cut the selvage off of these strips first, and then I can cut my last two strips. All right, so I have the last of my strips cut. So now I'm going to grab one of my strips that we cut of one of our prints and I'm going to go ahead and open it up. So you're going to grab one of your prints and then you're going to grab one of your, in my case, white strips. And so now we're actually going to just sew these two together. So I'm just going to, now if you are using another printed fabric, obviously you're gonna do pretty sides touching. So pretty side to touch pretty side. So you'll just lay it on top like this. And now we're just going to sew down the seam. So now something to keep in mind of my fabric. So this particular print is not directional, meaning there's not an image on it that has to be facing a certain way. But I do have a print that is directional, and that is going to be this print here. So now when I'm going to cut my strips with this print, so this is the full length, this is the width of fabric, so I have my selvage over here and my other selvage over here. So when I cut my strips, I will end up folding this fabric in half, and I'm just showing you what you need to keep in mind if you do have directional fabric. So my fabric will be folded in half like this and then I'll clean up one edge so that I can get myself a straight cut and then I'm going to do my six and a half inch strips. So I would come over, cut six and a half inches and then when I open that strip up, the pattern will be facing me when I open it up and so once I have my strip cut and ready, I'm going to get my white strip and then we will be sewing it down onto this other strip that I will have cut. And then when I open this up, I'll have my strip set. So once that's done, then I will be cutting my six and a half inch sections. But with the way this quilt is going to be laid out, once I cut my six and a half inch sections, these sections are not going to be facing us this way. They are going to be facing us this way in the quilt. So because this print is directional, when I am looking at my quilt top when it's completed, my directional print is going to be sideways. We don't want it to be sideways. So because of that, we are going to have to cut this particular print differently than the remaining prints in our fabric collection. So we will be setting this fabric aside and I will show you how you're gonna to wanna to deal with a directional print. In the meantime, let's go ahead and sew this strip set together here. So again, pretty sides to pretty sides and we're going to sew all the way down. Okay, so I have sewn my printed fabric to my white fabric, so now we can go ahead and start cutting our first strip set. To save yourself time, you can 
chain piece several of your printed several or all of your printed fabrics to your white fabric and then you can stack them and cut several at a time this way you're not having to make multiple multiple cuts you can layer them and do all of your cuts at one time so now I'm going to line up my fabric on one of the lines here on my cutting mat and then we can go ahead and start cutting alright so I have my fabric lined up so I am going to go ahead and start with a straight edge over on this side alright so we cut off a sliver over here so now what we're going to do is we're going to be cutting these into six and a half inch sets. Now based on the math that I did earlier, I should be able to get six of these little segments from each of my width of fabric strips. All right, so here are my six sets, and I just have a little bit of fabric left over. Yeah, so we don't have too terribly much waste left over from our strip. All right, so now this is your block. This is, these are the two blocks that this whole entire quilt is made up of. You have one of your printed blocks, which is a six and a half by six and a half, and then you have one of your, in my case, white blocks, which is two and a half by six and a half. Okay, so I have cut all the rest of my fabrics, leaving only my directional print. For this print, I have already trimmed off my salvage edges because I am wanting to save those. So again, the direction that it is currently sitting is the same direction that it will be when our quilt top is completed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut my six and a half inch strips starting from the right side and then moving my way over to the left. So now, based on my other prints, I was getting six of my six and a half by six and a half inch squares from each width of fabric. And I was getting two strips of six and a half by my width of fabric from each of my prints. So that means I was getting 12 six and a half by six and a half inch squares from my other prints. So I need to cut enough strips to give myself 12 six and a half by six and a half inch blocks. So again, I have already trimmed up this edge, so I'm going to come in and cut my first six and a half inch strip. All right, so there is my first strip. We'll go ahead and cut another. All right, so we have three cuts so far. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up this bottom edge here. Again, give myself a nice straight edge to do my measuring from. So now I'm not going to cut them just yet because while they are like this, I can go ahead and sew on my white strips to the right side of each of these three strips because that is the side that I want my white piece to be on. So based on what I have here, so we'll be able to get one, two, it looks like we'll only be able to get two blocks, yeah. So we'll only be able to get two from each of these strips. So these three, will give me the equivalent of one of my width of fabric strips for my other prints. So that means I need to cut three more of these from the remaining fabric to get my total of 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut three more strips from here, and then once those are cut, again, we can add our white strips onto the right side of each of our strips here, and that'll be our block that we're needing for our quilt top. Okay, so I've sewn all of my printed fabric to my white fabric, and I have gone ahead and pressed all of my seams towards the printed fabric. So what I've done is I've laid out four of my strip sets here, and I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out my six and a half inch blocks. So if you're not comfortable cutting several layers of fabric at one time, that's completely fine. You can do them individually. But because I have so many to cut, I did decide to go ahead and layer up a couple so I can knock out a few at one time. 
So while this is a time-saving method, keep in mind, if you mess up a measurement on one of your cuts, it's not just on one of your cuts. It's on however many pieces of fabric you have layered at that time. So just keep that in mind. There you go. And using the six and a half inch measurements or squares for this pattern, you're able to get six from each strip set. And then you're left with just a little bit here left over. I am going to keep these because these pieces are big enough to still do something with. So I am going to continue cutting the rest of my strip sets. And then once all of those are cut, then we can go ahead and start laying out how we want our quilt top to be. All right, so I have all of my blocks cut out. I have pressed all my seams so we are ready to start doing the layout. So I am doing the throw size version of this quilt and I want it to be about 60 by 60. So based on the measurements of my block, I need to do eight blocks going across and I need to do 11 rows going down. That'll give me a finished quilt top of 64 by 66. So I'm going to go ahead and start laying them out. Again, I just need eight for my first row, and then I'll show you how to lay out the second row. All right, so I have my first row laid out here, and I think it looks pretty good. I love the very beachy vibe of this fabric collection, especially since I live in Florida. So yeah, I'm loving this first row so far and I can't wait to get the rest of it laid out. So let me go ahead and show you how to lay out the second row. We want the white strips of our second row to be in the middle of our printed fabric of our first row. All right, so I'm just gonna grab one of my lighter blue squares here so now, what I mean by the white strip in the center of the printed fabric, so we're gonna want it to be like this. So our block here is gonna be six inches when it's finished, and our white strips are gonna be two inches when they're finished, so you just want that to be in the middle of your six inch printed block. So I've got that one laid out, so now I'm going to go ahead and grab another block, so let's see. I like this brown one, I think, so I'll put this right here. And we're just gonna lay that right next to our light blue one, so now we'll go ahead and get another one. So I think we'll go with this darker block here. And so this is all you're gonna do for the rest of this row and then for the remaining rows of the quilt. So I'm just trying to make sure I don't have any of the same like color right next to each other so I wouldn't put this dark blue in this spot or this spot because it's too close to this dark blue. So I'm just going to keep laying them out like this for the remainder of my rows. Alright, so I have all of my rows and columns laid out here, and I think I like the placement of all of the different blocks as far as like the color goes. Um, I think I like how it looks now. So obviously it is not even on the left and the right sides. Now granted nothing is sewn together, but even once it is sewn together, it's not going to be even because we staggered our rows. So there are a couple of different things you can do. So you could trim off four inches from these five blocks here and move that four inch section over to these five blocks over here and then sew them together like you would the rest. But even by doing that, this side over here is still going to be a half inch off because you would need a four and a half inch section over here but we're only gonna be able to get four inches from this side. So you could trim four inches, add it over here, and then still have to trim a half inch off from the white little sashing strips in order to get it to be even. Um, or you could just trim off four inches on this side, trim off four inches on this side, and then it would be even. Or if you used yardage to do this quilt top pattern like I did, um, based on the number of strips that I cut, I have eight 
whole blocks left over. So what I could do is I could trim off four inches from over here and then take five of these leftover blocks and add them over here and then trim off the extra from here. So there are a couple of different things you can do. Um, I think I might use some of my leftover blocks here and add them over here and then trim off the extra from here and then also trim off these blocks here. But I will still have enough fabric left over where I think I might be able to get a nice little throw pillow out of the same fabric to go along with my quilt top. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start first by trimming off these blocks over here and then adding in these blocks over here. All right, so I have trimmed the edges on this side. I have added in the blocks to this side and then I trimmed down the four inches on that side. So now, once everything is sewn together, our quilt top will be even on both sides. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna start sewing all of my rows together, starting with that top row and then working my way down now, because I don't have to worry about seams from like this row meeting up with seams in this row, I don't necessarily have to worry about which direction I'm going to be pressing my seams, but I will be pressing the seams away from the white strips. So like for this seam here, for these two seams, this seam here will go towards this brown block and then this seam right here will go towards this lighter colored block. And that's just because I want to try and minimize the amount of seams that you can see in the white fabric. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's get to sewing. All right, so I've sewn all of the individual blocks together. So now all that's left are to sew our long seams connecting each of the rows together. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those all sewn together now. All right, so I finished sewing all of my rows together and here is the quilt. Check it out. So how cute is this quilt top? This pattern is so stinking easy and it comes together so super quick. All right, so the next step for this quilt is to actually quilt it. So because it is a very beachy fabric line, I wanted to get a quilting pattern that was beach related or beach-esque. So there are a ton of beach pantographs out there that I saw, but I found one that was so super cute and I thought it was perfect for this fabric line and for this pattern. So here, is the pantograph pattern that I picked out. So now this is called Sea Creatures and it's by Urban Elements or it's from Urban Elements. So now this is the self printed version. So you can get the same pattern. Um, you can get it printed out and mailed to you where it's one long continuous strip of I think it's 144 inches long. Um, or you can self print it yourself or you can get the electronic version if you have the automation on your long arm. So I do not have automation on my long arm and I was too impatient to buy the printed out like the nice version of it. So I'm fine with the self print so I did the self printed version and all I do is you can probably see it on the back here. You see those two shiny strips. So I tape mine together on the back and the front, you can see it there. So now, this pantograph pattern is three pages if you print it out yourself, and this is one section, and then you just tape the other continuing sections onto the edges of it. So I've got one section taped here so I can show you. Um, but yeah, I didn't wanna wait uh, for the printed out one to come in the mail, and I don't have automation, so I did self print. So now as the self printed option, this pattern is nine and three quarter inches tall. Um, I believe the printed out version from Urban Elements is a little bit bigger. It might be 10 and a half inches. Don't quote me on that, but normally when you self print, it's a little bit smaller than if you buy the printed copy from Urban Elements. So this is the pattern that I'm going to be using 
And again, I think with the little crabs and the turtle and the starfish, I think it goes perfect with the fabric collection because there are starfish in this print that I picked for the quilt pattern. Um, so I think this will go perfect. All right, so for my thread options for my top, um, I went with another superior thread. Um, so this is a thread set. This is the Magnifico Sea Glass Spool Set. So these six threads come together in a set, and again, it's called the Sea Glass Spool Set. And this is from Superior Threads. It is part of their Magnifico line. So they've got six colors here to choose from, and they are all inspired um, by like essentially being out on the beach. Um, in their description, they had mentioned picking and finding sea glass while you're out walking along the beach. Um, so it has that beachy vibe to it, just like the fabric collection and the pantograph pattern that I picked. So the colors are gonna go perfect. Um, this is a 40 weight um, thread. It is 100% polyester. So it's going to be a little bit stronger than if you went with just a traditional 100% cotton thread. What I really like about the polyester threads is they are not linty like you tend to find with most cotton threads. So yes, this is polyester thread. These are two ply um, polyester. So for the colors, they it is heavy on the greens, as you can tell from these four spools here. So now, granted, this one here is a blue, but it has kind of that green tint to it. Um, and then, really, the blue thread spools are pretty much these two. So if you kind of compare it, like, yes, you could kind of lean that it's blue, but I feel like me personally that it leans more into the green of the set. But I think for this fabric collection, I think I'm going to go with one of the actual blue ones, just because there's really not any green in this fabric collection, or at least not with the fabric prints that I picked. So I don't really think these greens would really go so swell with the fabric, so I'm not going to consider those. So that leaves these two options. So now, this is a high sheen thread, so it's going to be like shiny, it's going to be noticeable, which I'm okay with because I do kind of want the pantograph pattern to stand out a little bit. So I think what I'll do is I'll unspool a little bit from each thread and lay it across some of the fabrics and just see which one goes better. All right, so I've laid out a little bit of thread from both spools, so the top thread up here is the Magnifico 2146, and this is the Horizon color. On the bottom, we have the Magnifico 2144, and this is the Sky Blue color. So they both look nice with the fabrics that you can see here, and I know it's probably a little hard to see it in the camera, so let me see if I can pile it up a little bit for you so you can get a better idea. So now both of these, as I mentioned earlier, are a high sheen thread and I can definitely see it. It is very shiny. It is very nice feeling. It's a very soft thread. Um, these are good for long arming or embroidery, so you can use it for either or. Um, on their website, it does specifically say that it can handle the heat that is generated from the speed of a long arm sewing machine. So that works great for me because I'm going to be using it on my long arm. So I've piled it up here a little bit. Let me see if I can zoom in and show you what they look like. So on the bottom here, this is the 2144. Again, this is the sky blue. So I think that looks really nice against both of the blues here. It looks great against the brown over here. And let's check out the darker one over here. There we go. All right, so again, this is the 2146. This is the Horizon color. So this one looks nice, but I feel like, specifically in the darker blue, I feel like this blue is almost, 
I don't want to quite say neon looking. I'm guessing it's maybe the sheen almost gives it a neon appearance, or at least it does in person to me. So I do love this blue, but I don't know that it really goes well against this darker blue fabric. So I think because of that, I think I'm going to go ahead and go with the sky blue thread here. I think this will look really nice against all of the different fabrics in the fabric collection. And I really think it'll highlight the quilting pattern that I've selected for this quilt top. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thread loaded up on my long arm and then I will go ahead and get this beautiful quilt top quilted up. All right, so I have finished quilting this quilt. So you can see it here a little bit and I'll show you a close up and pictures and whatnot once it's completed. So now the only thing left to do is to put the binding on. Now I do still need to cut the binding and sew it together. And I am going to be using this beautiful Painter's Watercolor Swirl. So now this is a coordinating basic. It is not part of the Blue Escape Coastal Fabric Collection, but it does go with the fabrics in this collection. I'm going to go ahead and cut my strips, iron it, get it all sewn together, and then go ahead and get it sewn onto the quilt. And then once that's done, then I can show you all the grand reveal. All right, everyone, so the quilt is completely done. I just finished attaching the binding, and I think it is so super cute. And especially living in Florida, this gives me complete Florida vibes. So this fabric collection is called Blue Escape Coastal. It's by Lisa Audit for Riley Blake Designs. So the Blue Escape Coastal collection has 18 prints, and of those 18, I picked seven prints to use in this quilt. So there are still so many super other cute prints with this collection. So there were a couple of fabrics that I used in this top that are not part of the Blue Escape Coastal collection. There are three actually that aren't part of the collection. So the three that I included in here that are outside of the collection is the first one, is this print right here. This is called Blossom Khaki. The second fabric that's not part of the collection is the white fabric. This is Riley White and is part of the Confetti Cottons basic line. So this is not part of the Blue Escape Coastal collection. And then the last fabric that's outside of the collection is the fabric that I used for the binding. This fabric is called Painter's Watercolor Swirl and it's the cornflower color. And then the backing of the quilt is also Riley White. So let's have a closer look at the quilt and see some of the beautiful details in the fabric and then also the quilting pattern. Again, I did not use a pattern to put this quilt together, but it's made up of two simple and easy blocks. The first block is the main block here, which is just six and a half by six and a half inch squares. And then the second block are the white stripes here, which are just two and a half by six and a half inch squares. If you're interested in making this quilt pattern, in the description down below, I have the number of blocks that you need to make based on the size of quilt that you are wanting to make. If you would like to use the Blue Escape Coastal Fabric Collection, I have a link in the description down below where you can pick up a fat quarter bundle which includes all 18 prints of this fabric collection. I also have a link in the description down below where you can get the Sea Creatures Panograph pattern that I used here. I did get it from Urban Elements. I also have a link in the description where you can pick up the same blue thread that I used for the top of the quilt. The thread that I used was from Superior and it was part of the Magnifico Sea Glass spool set. If you have any questions about today's tutorial, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. If you liked today's video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to my YouTube channel yet, please make sure you do so by hitting the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and until next time, I will see you all later.